Subsequent analysis of the campaign on Taros through a study of reports, the interrogation of captured enemy combatants, signals intercept data and other classified sources, has revealed much of how the Tau fought on Taros. Much of this information was compiled by Colonel Shaja and was submitted to the Administratum and the Office of the Lord Commander Militant during the campaign, prior to the Colonel being killed in combat. For the Tau Shasar Tol, a world such as Taros was perfect for their expansionist ambitions given its ample resources and location. It did, however, present a number of issues which would have to be resolved. After being invited to help defend Taros by those traitors who supported their cause there, the Tau's subsequent swift conquest meant they had more new territory than they could effectively defend. When the Imperium reacted and counterattacked, the Tau could not occupy every part of the planet, and therefore Imperium forces were able to land just about anywhere. It appeared that the size of the expected Imperial attack was also a concern for Tau commanders, with plans to ship additional warriors into the system should the battle seem as if it was no longer going in their favor. To aid their manpower problems in the meantime, it has been ascertained that the Tau arranged to induct as many of the old planetary defense forces as they could. The Tau were already well accustomed to using such Xenos troops, and rather than waste them as cannon fodder, actually respected their fighting qualities and treated them in a manner some would consider fair. After time in Tau service, many such traitor units became keen to aid the greater good and fought well for their new Xenos commanders. This was contrary to initial Imperial expectations of poor morale amongst indentured troops. We can surmise that long discussions took place on Tau about the situation on Taros. Many counselors must have argued that in order for the conquest of Taros to be successful, any Imperial invasion must be immediately hurled back, causing maximum damage to prevent or delay any additional retaliation. Such a heavy defeat, they must have assumed, would persuade the Imperium of Man never to try to invade again, and that the planet was now lost to it. On the ground and in space, the Tau were determined to match force with force. These Tau must have also argued that by the time the Imperium could organize another invasion attempt, the situation on the Tau Empire's frontier would have moved on. The next planet would already have been targeted, and the Imperium's focus would have to shift to its defense also, meaning Taros would be forgotten. It seems that, in their opinion, what the situation on Taros needed was a rapid build-up of more hunter cadres and more crute mercenaries in order to militarize the system, build defense stations in orbit, and make a show of strength that the Imperium might balk at. But the commander of the Tau's military forces already on Taros, identified as Shaso Ramaya, guided by the ethereal Anvara, was already planning a different strategy. Rather than rely on more troops and a large fleet presence in system, Ramir was more conservative in his needs. He already had experience fighting Imperial Guard forces and had learned something of their strengths and weaknesses. Shaso Ramir believed that to try to defeat the Imperium in an open battle was a mistake. He had little doubt his forces could achieve victory this way, but only at a high cost, perhaps a greater price than the Tau Empire should pay for the conquest of Taros. If it came to a pitched battle, the Imperium would send more forces and the battle would escalate, then more ships, more men and more tanks would follow the first wave. And although the Tau might destroy them, victory would not be quick, and the cost in lives would be great. Worse still, Ramir was concerned that the Tau fleet was not capable of inflicting a wholly decisive defeat on the Imperium's vessels if it came to a fleet engagement. The vast firepower of the Imperium's ships would always give it the advantage in a straight fight, and to Ramir, the Tau fleet was not a war fleet, but a colonization fleet. To stand and fight in space would be a mistake and cost the Tau Empire heavily. Instead, they should offer minimal resistance and allow the Imperium to gain orbit and land its troops. In Oromir's plan, the war for Taros could be won on the ground, 
in its scorching deserts rather than in the cold depths of space. For his strategy, Chasso Ramaya was using the Tao doctrine of Kaoyon, or the patient hunter. This time the hunter's lure would be the absence of Tao forces. He allowed the Imperium onto Taros, then drew them deeper into the deserts before striking and cutting off the Imperium's lifeline of supplies. This was the Imperium's weakness. Their soldiers would need food, ammunition and water to fight, and if his forces could destroy their supply lines, it would bring about a rapid success. Once battle was joined on the surface, Ramir then turned to the Tao doctrine of Montka, or the Killing Blow. The Tao's ground war therefore had two separate but linked missions. First, having used the absence of troops as a lure to draw the Imperial forces into the open, out of their defensive positions and into the deserts, Ramaya struck hard, targeting the forward Imperial units with the long-range firepower of his hammerheads and broadsides. Rapid strikes by mobile armored hunter cadres hitting the Imperial forces hard, then quickly withdrawing and dispersing, slowed any advance and sapped Imperial manpower and morale. In the open desert he was maximizing his advantage regards range and avoiding expensive close quarters battle. He gave ground before the advance, never staying to fight for more than a localized counterattack. And this way, he stretched Imperial supply lines whilst making them pay daily in manpower and fighting machines. When the Imperium's attack was overextended and weary from weeks of combat, the second phase then commenced. Next, using mantas and orcas, Ramaya launched a series of swift and stealthy hunter cadres deep behind enemy lines to attack rear installations and supply columns, putting his most vigorous Chazelle commanders in charge of this operation. Making wide use of stealth suits, pathfinders and aircraft, the teams located and attacked supply dumps and convoys, air bases and headquarters, sowing confusion and denying the front line security for its supply lines. Combined with new fleet operations in the system, which were specifically targeting the Imperial transport vessels, he managed to cut off the Imperial Guard Regiment's lifeline of supplies, support and reinforcements, leaving them stranded in the desert. The Imperium's weakness was its huge logistical tail, and this was where the Chassel concentrated their efforts. From interrogations, it is now known that many Tau Hunter cadre commanders in the Chassar Toll thought the plan was overly defensive and too easily handed the initiative to the Imperium. They believed that the Imperium would be at its weakest during its planetary landings and would have preferred to smash them with a large counterattack, meaning the war would be over before it had started. This theory was sound enough, but in practice, given the planet's size and the Imperium's perceived dominance of the surrounding space lanes, how could Ramaya stop an invasion? Once in low orbit, the Imperium would have the entire planet to choose from. Certain areas could be ignored, like the inhospitable deserts and mountains, but from the perspective of the Tau forces, the area to be defended was still vast. Only by spreading their troops thinly would there be any likelihood of forces being available for an immediate counterattack, and thinly spread forces would mean not enough firepower to overrun the landing zones. Concentrating their assets too early would present the Imperium with a good target for its heaviest weapons or an orbital bombardment. This was considered a huge risk because a sustained orbital bombardment might tear Tau forces apart before battle even started. Ultimately, for the Tau Ramir's tactics worked, and for those who have to fight that Xenos race in the future, they are hereby sanctioned for study.